On day one, I spawned in as the Grinch. Wow, look at that. I'm the Grinch, ready to steal Christmas. Oh no, I only have three hearts. I guess it's true what the story says. The Grinch's heart is way too small. I was so focused on my hearts, I didn't hear the huge group of bad snowmen creeping up on me. They blended in with the snow at first, but I heard them just before their leader grabbed me. Hey, what's the big idea? I know I'm the Grinch, but that's no reason to be so mean. Come with us, and no one gets hurt. Forget that. I've got to steal Christmas. I don't have time to deal with you. I pulled away from the leader and started to run away. Luckily, I was faster than the bad snowmen and was able to run past them. Hey, get back here! No way! As I ran away from the bad snowmen, I started thinking about what I knew about the Grinch. If I was going to be him, I wanted to get it right. I knew he was a mean one who couldn't stand the Who's or their Christmas celebrations, who wanted to take all the presents and food for himself. But wait, the Grinch doesn't work alone. He has his trusty dog, Max, his only friend in the whole world. I looked around for a dog, but couldn't see one anywhere. Oh no, what happened to Max? How can I steal Christmas without him? I was about to start searching the ice caves for my dog when an ice cave spider crawled out of the cave and bit me. Ouch! I could feel that the bite had poisoned me, and I had to think fast to counter the effect. I ran and ran and ran until I found a village, and there was a pen full of cows. Perfect. Excuse me, Miss Cow. Can I have some of your milk? Sure, fine by me. I was able to get a milk bucket and cure the poison before I got too sick. But before I could look for any other supplies, a farmer came into the pen. Eek! Get out of here, you! Stop trying to ruin our holiday fun! He didn't have to tell me twice. I made my way back toward the caves, and after making sure there weren't any more spiders waiting for me, I crawled into one to rest. I found some logs, sticks, and charcoal, and crafted and placed a campfire to get warm. As I settled in, I thought about Max the dog again. What's the point of stealing Christmas without my best friend? I have to find him and get him back so we can pull off the holiday heist of the century. On day two, I woke up and went out of the cave. I made it through the first day, but if I was going to keep surviving, I needed to find a safe place to hide out. But I didn't want to stay somewhere that the bad snowmen might come looking for me again. I decided that, whether they liked it or not, I should camp out closer to that village. That way, I'd have lots of people who would also see the snowmen coming. But I couldn't set up right in the village either. If I was too close, people like that farmer might get mad and chase me out of town. Then I'd have to start all over. I decided to have a look around and see what was right by the village. It turned out that there was a mountain right next to the village, and from the top of the mountain, I could see the villagers down below. Perfect! Not too close, but not too far, and not out by those dangerous snowy caves where the snowmen found me before. This is it. This is where I'll build my base. But before I could build it, I needed some tools. I made myself a crafting table and crafted a wooden pickaxe. Next, I took that pickaxe and mined some stones. Awesome! Now I can make stone tools! I made a pickaxe, an axe, a shovel, and a sword. Then, I got to work gathering some more wood so I could build my base. All the way up here, on the edge of a cliff, it was going to be kind of tricky to build, but I knew I could do it. While I was working, I saw a figure approaching me. It looked like a villager. I'm just building a base. I'm not here to steal from you. But as they got closer, I realized it was a pillager instead, and he shot an arrow at me. Oh, no you don't! I drew my sword and managed to fight him off. Then I chased him away from my base for good measure. As I was walking back to my base, I saw that someone had dropped some cookies and left a chest in the middle of the forest. The chest had a bunch of supplies in it. These aren't mine. It would be selfish to take them. But I am the Grinch after all. It started to get dark and began to snow, so I settled in for a good night's rest. I'll get even more done tomorrow. On day three, I woke up knowing that I needed to get more supplies. I looked all over the mountain, but I couldn't find anything useful. So, I decided to sneak back down into the nearby village instead. If the villagers are going to treat me like a criminal because I'm the Grinch, then I guess I'd better start stealing. I decided to go to a different village than the one right below my base, just in case they caught me and chased me back home. Instead, I went to the next village over and started sneaking through town looking for supplies to snatch. But as I entered the village, I heard someone scream. I did see something though, a horde of zombies attacking the village. No wonder someone was screaming. Get back, undead creeps! I drew my sword and started swinging, fighting off the green ghouls. A little girl appeared on top of a nearby building, holding a bow and arrow. She started firing arrows at the zombies, and between her arrows and my sword, we drove all of those nasty undead back out of town. She came to greet me. 
Thanks for the help. Sure. My name is Cindy Lou Who. What's yours? Zozo, but you can call me Mr. Grinch. Say, have you seen any bad snowmen around here? Or just these zombies? The snowmen came yesterday. They took a whole bunch of people with them. My family, too. I don't know who they're working for, but they keep kidnapping people and destroying our town. That must have been what happened to her parents. Come back to my base with me. We can hide out and stay safe while we figure out who those bad snowmen are working for. On days four to five, Cindy and I worked on the base together. We demolished the previous starter house I made and built a bigger house. I even added a loft where Cindy could live. But it still wasn't completely finished. We needed to strengthen our security to keep safe just in case the snowmen came back or something else found us. And whoever was ordering them around, the big bad who took Max was probably way tougher than them. I'm getting pretty hungry. Could we look for some food? Great idea. Me too. I think I saw some apple trees down this way. Help me pick some. I've got some other supplies we can use to make a pie. I love pie. Who doesn't? Cindy and I found a whole bunch of apple trees and started picking the fruit to take back to our base. As we were gathering apples, we suddenly heard a howl. What was that? Cindy and I both looked around and saw a pack of feral wolves closing in around us. Cindy was so much more defenseless than me, I couldn't let the wolves get to her. Quick, Cindy, climb this tree and get to safety. I'll handle these wolves. I can use my bow and arrows from up there too. Cindy climbed up out of reach and started firing arrows at the wolves. I helped out with my sword from down on the ground and together we were able to defeat the wolves. As Cindy climbed back down from the tree, I noticed something shiny on the ground, huh? a bottle. One of the wolves must have been carrying this in its mouth. It's a potion of healing. Yes. Sweet. I grabbed it, and together Cindy and I took all of our apples back to the base. We're going to need to find a way to keep danger away from our base. I think I might have an idea. But first, let's eat. On day six to eight, Cindy and I started to get really hungry again. We can't live on apples forever. We need to find another food source. Oh, I know what we can do. We had cows and chickens back in my village. No one's using them right now. We should go get them. Oh, great. Let's make some pens for them first. We worked together to build the pens, two for the chickens and a big one for the cows. We even added a small farm to feed the animals. Then we headed back down to Cindy's village to round up the animals. As we were working hard to herd the animals in the right direction, which was much more difficult than I expected, I heard a voice yelling at us. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch, but you're no match for me. Better come willingly if you ever want to see your dog Max again. What? Who's talking about my best friend Max? I looked up, but I couldn't see anyone. I could just hear them. Wait, look! Cindy pointed, and I saw a huge Jabberwock looking down at us from the top of a tall tree. You! You took Max? My friends call me Steve, and my enemies call me Evil Steve. I took your little dog, and Cindy's parents too. And I won't stop there. You think you can steal Christmas? Try doing that when there is no one left to celebrate it. I'm taking them all, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Next, I'll take you too. The Jabberwock jumped down from the tree and landed hard in front of us. The force from his blow knocked my sword right out of my hand. Oh no, what should I do? This isn't the kind of reindeer I thought I'd be meeting as the Grinch. I ran after the sword, and Cindy followed me. Evil Steve just stood there laughing, and we knew we weren't strong enough to beat him. Not yet. I grabbed my sword, and we ran back to the base. Evil Steve didn't chase us, but we knew it wasn't the last we'd seen of him. Next time, we'd have to make sure we were ready, so we could defeat him and set everyone free. Maybe I can be the Grinch who saved Christmas instead. On days 9 to 10, Cindy could tell I was getting discouraged. I was feeling pretty scared after our encounter with Evil Steve, and pretty worried that I wouldn't be able to get Max back. It'll be okay, Zozo. I think if we work hard, we can get strong enough to beat him to rescue Max and my parents and everyone else. How? He's so big and we're so small. I know you don't think you can be a hero like this, but you helped me with the zombies and again with the wolves. Together, we can do anything. Tell me more about Max. You'd do anything to get him back, right? Well, he's the most loyal dog in the world. No matter what, he sticks by my side and helps me with whatever I want to do. He was even willing to be a reindeer and pull my sleigh to steal Christmas, even though he's so small and the sleigh would be so big. I just wish I'd told him thank you more before he was missing. I have an idea I think might help cheer you up. Let's build a statue of Max together to show him how much you appreciate him and to welcome him to the base. 
we talked it out near a forest and decided to clear out an area to make room for the statue. After that was done, we started construction on the Max statue. We worked all day, and by the time we were finished, we had the bed Max would sit on, only much bigger. We're off to a great start. We are, but it's starting to get dark. I think we should build some torches to keep any enemies from coming up to the base while we're sleeping. That was my idea from before. I almost forgot in all of the excitement. Great idea. I don't know what I'd do without you, Cindy. I proceeded to quickly craft some torches and place them around the base. On the night of day 11, I had the strangest dream. I saw a very little reindeer grazing by a stream with a herd of other reindeer. As he ate the grass, an evil wizard approached the herd of reindeer. Hello, little reindeer. Nice stream you've got here. It's a shame it's in the way of where I'm going to put my castle. You all need to leave or perish. But this is our home. Too bad. Get out of here or I'll make you go. The reindeer were terrified and confused. They didn't want to leave. Please put your castle somewhere else. It's Christmas. Where are we supposed to go? Hm. No, and I don't care. I need my castle here for my grand Christmas party and none of you are invited. For your insolence, I will turn you all into frogs. And the wizard cast an evil spell, transforming every reindeer in sight into frogs. But the littlest reindeer ran away before he could be cursed too. He ran and ran and ran to a nearby village. Please, help me. An evil wizard turned my family into frogs. But none of the villagers would listen to him. They closed their doors and locked him out. He cried and cried and wandered into the forest, looking for a way to become strong enough to go back and defeat the evil wizard. He came across a deep dark cave and found a podium. A sign next to it said, drink this to become stronger than your enemies. There was a bottle of dark purple potion. The little reindeer drank the entire bottle. Then he transformed into a great big Jabberwock. He ran back to the evil wizard who had now built his castle in the reindeer's old home. Remember me? He defeated the evil wizard and made him run out of the castle, taking it for himself. But I'm still not happy. I can never forgive the villagers for leaving me alone to face this evil force. I will never forgive them. Somehow, I will find a way to get my revenge. And then I woke up. I couldn't explain why, but somehow I knew that what I had seen was real. I told Cindy all about it and she agreed. On days 13 to 15, I went back to Cindy's village to get some more animals and herd them back to our base. The chickens Cindy got seemed pretty lonely and we were both getting really hungry. So I herded some chickens and cows back to the base. Then I went back to the village again for some sheep and pigs. Here piggies, here sheep. But the animals started running away like they were scared of something. I looked up and there were those zombies again. There were even more of them than before. And this time I didn't have Cindy and her bow and arrow to help me out. But I stood my ground instead of running away. I pulled out my sword to face them. Come and get it zombies. As they approached, I took them down one by one. I don't have time for this. I have to help my friend, get back her parents, and rescue my dog. Get out of this village, now. As I defeated the zombies, I felt a surge of bravery and strength coursing through my veins, and I felt my heart grow in size. I gained two hearts too. As I looked down at my Grinch fingers, I noticed that they had gotten long, pointer, and claw-like. This made my attacks even faster. I'll be able to defeat evil Steve in no time. I can't wait to show Cindy. On days 16 to 19, I brought the sheep and pigs back to the base, and I showed Cindy my new fighting skill. That's amazing! Now I just need to find some materials to upgrade our weapons. Then we can really make some progress. I'll get the animals settled, and you can start mining. With our plan sorted out, I started digging into a cave system and mining for materials. I found some iron. Nice! Now I can make iron tools. As I was gathering the iron, I spotted a little bunny. Aw, hi bunny! But as I got closer, I realized that this was no ordinary bunny. It had red eyes and was coming at me fast. It was a killer bunny! Oh geez, not now! Well, I guess it's time to test out my new abilities. The killer bunny leapt at me and attacked, but I was ready for it. I was here to steal Christmas, but I guess I can take on Easter too. I fought back, blocking the bunny and sending it flying back a few steps. It came at me again, but I swung my new long fingers and knocked it away. With a bit of time to gather myself, I pulled out my sword and slashed it back and forth until the killer bunny got scared and ran out of the mine and off into the woods. Hop along now, little bunny. Go pick on someone a little less awesome. Now, let me grab this iron. I took the iron back to my base, smelted it, and made a full set of iron armor and tools for me and Cindy. On days 20 to 22, I woke up to the sound of Cindy calling for me. Zozo, Mr. Grinch, 
We need to get ready. Are you here? I'm up, I'm up. What's going on? I ran outside to see Cindy standing with an old man I hadn't seen before. Mr. Zozo Grinch, Evil Steve is on his way here right now. How do you know that? Because I just managed to escape from his castle, and I wanted to get back and find my granddaughter. I'm afraid I must have led him right to you. Wait, are you Cindy's grandfather? I am, but we don't have time for proper introductions. You need to get ready. I will do my best to help you fight him off, but I am not a very strong fighter. If he's headed this way, then I'll meet him before he gets to the base. There is no time to waste. I grabbed my new iron sword and pulled on my brand new armor. I ran ahead, following the sound of Evil Steve's big, booming footsteps. There you are. I'm stronger than I was before. I'm not scared of you. You should be. You think a little more training and a simple iron sword will be enough? You're a fool. You're a bad banana with a greasy peel. Taking innocent dogs and villagers won't make up for what that wizard did to your family. Can't you find someone to turn them back into reindeer and just leave everyone else alone? It's too late for that. There will be no stopping me. I'm going to take all of the villagers from every village around here, throw them in my dungeon, then go through their homes and take all of their food and holiday presents for myself. None of them deserve to celebrate. So, you're trying to steal Christmas? That's my thing. Before I could say anything else, he was swiping at me with those big Jabberwock claws. But my armor protected me, and I fought back with my new sword. He dodged, but I got a few good hits in too. This is a waste of time. You haven't seen the last of me. And he disappeared back into the trees. Sure, I didn't defeat him, and I didn't have Max back yet. But I could tell he was a little bit scared this time. He may have been big and bad, but with some more time and training, I could be even badder. On days 23 to 26, Cindy and I returned to our abandoned village to look for materials that might help us defeat Evil Steve. Anything he could have left behind, or any extra supplies that might help us upgrade our weapons, our armor, or our base. While we were searching an empty house, I found a crossbow. Wow, this will really come in handy if I need to do some ranged attacks. And look, here are some fireworks to use as ammunition. That's some real firepower. What's this over here? Cindy was standing by a bookshelf where one of the books had fallen onto the ground. I picked it up and read it. If you are liking the video so far, please like and subscribe, and leave a comment on what adventure you think we should go on next. Weird, must be some kind of secret code or something. Let's keep looking. On days 27 to 31, Cindy and I went back to the base and I started doing more work on the statue of Max. After that fight with Evil Steve and the exhausting search for more supplies, I needed something to get my spirits up. This looks pretty good so far, but I think it's missing something. What do you think? Hmm, yeah, I think you're right. We need some oak planks to make this really perfect. There's some down by the beach. Great, you keep working here and I'll go to the beach. I made the journey to the beach based on Cindy's directions. And when I got there and started looking for oak trees, a tarantula crawled out of its home and attacked me. Hey, whoa, I'm just here for some oak trees. I don't want any trouble. But the tarantula didn't listen to me and just kept attacking. It bit me. Ow, stop it, that hurts. Let me get the oak logs and I'll be out of your way. It bit me again and I started getting pretty mad. Okay, if that's how you want to do this. I grabbed my iron sword and slashed at the tarantula, knocking it away before it could bite me again. It skittered away, leaving me alone once and for all. Finally, now let's see about that oak tree. I gathered all the blocks I needed for the statue and headed back to the base to help Cindy keep building. On days 32 to 35, I was heading back to my base when suddenly I saw a moose charging right at me, its antlers lowered to strike. Hey, I'm just walking here. I dove out of the way, but the moose just turned around and started to charge me again. What did I ever do to you? This time, I climbed a tree and pulled out my new crossbow. I shot a firework toward the moose, and when it exploded, it scared the moose so badly it jumped up into the air. Then it ran away without another look. Wow, that was impressive. Who said that? I looked around, but couldn't see anyone. Down here. Below the tree, poking out of a hole, was a mouse. Say, if you're a big mighty hero, would you help me with something? What is it? This awful Jabberwock stole a present I got from my mother. Could you help me get it back? I'm trying to defeat him anyway. Where is it? I heard he has a bunch of his stolen loot stashed on an island nearby in a treasure chest. He keeps it there until it's time to bring it all to his castle. Don't worry, I'll get the present back. On days 36 to 39, I traveled to the island that the mouse had told me about. I used a raft to get across the water, and thankfully nothing attacked me on the way. 
When I finally made it to the island, I could see the treasure chest, but I could also see something else. There were soul vultures above the treasure chest, guarding it from anyone looking to take it. Oh no, what should I do about them? There's no way I can get the present back if they're up there waiting for me. What can I do? Should I try to use my crossbow to fight them off? Or should I try to sneak onto the island and use my long Grinch fingers to grab the treasure chest without them noticing? There are a lot of them. I think I'd rather do the second one if I can. But I'll bring my weapons, just in case. On days 40 to 43, I hopped off my raft and got up onto the island without the soul vultures seeing me. I tiptoed onto the sand as carefully and quietly as I could and crawled along the ground toward the treasure chest. I stretched my fingers and grabbed the items from the treasure chest. Success! The soul vultures were still above me and hadn't seen a thing. Psst, excuse me. I turned and saw a mouse in a little cage behind me. The key to this cage was in that treasure chest. Could you help me out? Yes, but we will have to move fast. I pulled the key out, then unlocked the cage and released the mouse. No, oh, thank you so much. Quick, let's get out of here. I went back to the raft and the mouse followed me as well. The soul vultures finally realized what had happened, but we were long gone and paddling back across the water. And for some reason, the crabs started dancing as if they were happy for the soul vultures' misfortune. I brought the contents of the treasure chest back to the first mouse I met. Amazing, thank you. Now I can give my mother her hat. Oh, and you can keep all the pies I made in exchange for saving me. Yum, thank you. I know the Grinch is supposed to be mean, but sometimes being nice can be pretty sweet. On days 44 to 49, I made it back to the base. I finally gave Cindy the oak logs and she helped me add it to the next part of the statue. It's really starting to look like Max. I think this will be a great present. Next, we built some guard towers for the base. Now that Evil Steve knew where to find us, we had to be sure to be extra careful. With these new towers, if he tries to come back and mess with us, he won't know what hit him. On days 50 to 53, Evil Steve struck again when we were least expecting it. We meet again, Zozo. Aren't you happy to see me? I see that you've been accepting guests lately. Got any room for me and my friends, the stone monsters? Oh no, it looks like he really does have an army of stone monsters. My crossbow bolts will probably bounce right off of them. Cindy Lou, take your grandpa and hide in the base. It's too dangerous for you to be out here. But that's Zozo. Just go, it's okay, I can handle myself. Cindy and her grandpa ran back to the base. I had to buy them some time. Either you let us in, or we'll bring you and your friends back to my castle. We have plenty of room for our new guests. We're staying exactly where we are, Evil Steve. You really think you're better at stealing than the Grinch? No, but I'm better at kidnapping. Get him, boys! That's when the stone monsters came at me. I'm so glad I made those iron weapons and tools, or I would have never stood a chance. They came at me one by one, and I struck at them with my sword until they were either knocked down or ran away. But wait, where's Evil Steve? Zozo, help me! Cindy Lou, I'm on my way! I ran inside and found Cindy Lou crying. She seemed really upset. Zozo, Evil Steve came in here. He took my grandpa. I don't know what to do. It's okay, Cindy. We'll get him back, no matter what. I went outside of the base, and that's when the last few stone monsters attacked. They'd just been a distraction, while Evil Steve kidnapped Cindy Lou's grandpa. I defeated the last few stone monsters with my sword, and I got another upgrade. I worked my way up to seven hearts and got a new skill, Grinch Sneak. Because the Grinch is so good at sneaking around, I'll be able to sneak into places without being found. You'll never see me coming, Evil Steve. On days 54 to 57, I decided our base needed better security. We don't want any repeats of last time. And it made sense. After all, the Grinch doesn't like visitors. For my security system, I decided to go classic. A massive fence. But it's not like Evil Steve would be afraid of a little fence. I needed to get serious. That's why I added more guard towers. Now that's a Grinchy security system. After that, I decided I needed a little more information about what Evil Steve was planning. If I was going to steal back Cindy Lou's grandpa, I couldn't go in unprepared. That's why I went back to the plains to talk to the mouse I helped out earlier. Hey, Mr. Mouse, Evil Steve kidnapped my friend's grandpa and my dog Max. I want to help get them back, along with all other kidnapped people. Do you have any idea what he's planning? Well, I've always tried to avoid Evil Steve myself, with him being evil and all, but I know every year he hosts a big Christmas party and he makes all his prisoners go, whether they want to or not. If you're planning on sneaking in, that'll probably be the best time. Now there's an idea. Maybe stealing Evil Steve's Christmas wouldn't be such a bad thing. On days 58 to 62, I decided it was time to upgrade my armor. 
Iron was fine and all, but for going after the big boss, I needed something serious. That's right, it's time for the Grinch to get his long, Grinchy hands on some diamond armor and weapons. But getting your hands on diamond armor isn't easy. I found a huge dark cave and decided to explore it, but eventually I got to a dead end. Well, I guess sometimes the only way to go is down. I started mining deep into the ground with my iron pickaxe. That's when I discovered an even deeper part of the cave where lava was flowing. But hey look, there's a diamond deposit. You know what they say, diamonds are Grinch's best friend. At least, uh, I think that's the expression. The last thing I expected was for this cave to be haunted. A ghost ancient warrior popped out of the wall and started attacking me. I'm sorry for disturbing your burial grounds. I just wanted some diamonds, I swear. But he didn't listen to reason. He kept attacking me. So I needed to pull out my sword and defend myself. I've been fired my crossbow a few times. I've heard of ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future, but this is something else. Thankfully, I'm a much stronger fighter than I used to be. I kept fighting back until the ancient warrior ghost disappeared. But he didn't just disappear, he dropped a potion too. Potion of swiftness. That'll come in handy later. Don't mind if I do. I mined my diamonds and headed back to my base. That's where I made what I'd set out to make. A full set of diamond armor and a sword to match. Merry Christmas to me! On days 63 to 66, I carried on working on the statue of Max. It reminded me of what was most important, getting Max and Cindy Lou's grandpa and everyone else back safely for Christmas. But my statue of Max was looking a little sad. It needed something, but what? Oh, I know, Max always loved chasing a ball around. I should add a ball to the statue. I started making a nice red ball right in front of the statue of Max. It looked as if he was looking at it cheerfully. That's the Max I remember. When I get him back, I'm gonna play ball with him for hours. And if you want hours of fun too, then you should subscribe to Zozo and check out all of our fun Minecraft adventures. I love reading all of your awesome comments too. On day 67 to 70, it was finally time to stage my first rescue mission. The mouse told me that Evil Steve keeps all of his prisoners in his massive castle. If Max and Cindy Lou's grandpa are going to be going to any Christmas parties this year, it'll be mine. Whoa, look at that castle. It's so creepy. Why would anyone want to go to a Christmas party in there? Uh-oh, looks like he's got some more minions outside. Are those undead warriors? They make zombies look like sweet old grandmas in comparison. Evil Steve doesn't mess around when it comes to home defense. Maybe I should get some of those for my base. But I needed to worry about that later. How can I fight my way in? If I just go in, swords blazing, I might have attracted too much attention. I need to create a distraction. This is where my crossbow came in. I aimed it carefully from a hidden position and fired a bolt at a random corner of the castle walls. That got their attention. Then I needed to move fast. Lucky for me, I had a potion of swiftness. While the undead warriors were on their way over, I took the potion and then used my Grinch sneak skill to slip right past them and made my way into the castle right under their nose. Now I'm really living up to my Grinchy reputation. On days 71 to 74, I made my way deeper into Evil Steve's castle. It was somehow even creepier on the inside. After exploring for a bit, I opened a door at the end of the hall, and behind the door was a bunch of undead warriors waiting for me. Guess those undead warriors were way smarter than I gave them credit for. I'm totally surrounded. Uh, do you think we can just talk this out? The undead warriors didn't feel like talking. Actually, I don't even know if they can talk, but they sure can fight. I pulled out my diamond sword and went toe to toe with Evil Steve's undeath warrior security force. They jumped at me one by one, and every single one of them gave me a run for my money. By the time I'd finally defeated them all, I was exhausted, but I also noticed one of them dropped something, an antler headdress. Wow, this suits my style perfectly. I'm gonna look so cool. Not only was the antler headdress a strong fashion statement, it also gave me increased knockbacks on my attacks, an additional half a heart, and healed me when I was in a pinch. But personally, I think the coolest part of it all was that I'd have antlers, just like Evil Steve. I was so obsessed with my cool new hat that I almost didn't notice the giant door at the end of the hall. That looks like the door to the dungeon. Don't worry everybody, Zozo is coming to save you. On day 75 to 78, I finally broke into the dungeon in Evil Steve's castle. It was huge. I couldn't even count how many villagers he had packed into cells. I even recognized the farmer who chased me off from my first day. Help me Zozo, you gotta get us all out of here, please. Don't worry, I'm gonna get you all out of here. But we need to be careful, Evil Steve could be anywhere around here. The farmer dropped a potion of healing, and suddenly I could hear Evil Steve. Oh no! You're right, Zozo. I could be anywhere. Of course, he's right behind me. 
That's the exact kind of luck that the Grinch would have. You fell right into my trap, Zozo. I bet you're here for your precious little dog, aren't you? I'm here for everybody, but yes, of course I want Max back. Then you'll have to go through me, you Grinchy little fool. That's when Evil Steve swiped at me with his huge, curved Jabberwock claws. He was so much stronger and faster than any of his minions. I could see why he runs the show around here. He hit me so hard, I lost a few hearts. That put me in real trouble. But wait, I remember now. I have the healing potion. Bottoms up. Recharged, I pulled out my diamond sword and ran at him. Evil Steve was shocked at how strong I had gotten. That'd teach him to look down on me. I told you I was a mean one, Evil Steve. I bet you believe me now. But I shouldn't have been so confident, because everything was about to get much harder. On days 79 to 84, Evil Steve stopped attacking and seemed like he wanted to talk. It seems I underestimated you, Zozo. But don't worry, I won't make that mistake again. Bear witness to my true power. I've beaten all your guys, Evil Steve, and I'll beat you too. Huh, <laughs> I wouldn't be so sure. I could see everyone cowering in their cells, so I knew I was about to see something really, really scary. And Evil Steve didn't disappoint. He grew larger. He barely fit into the room. His claws were almost the size of me. One strike with those, even wearing my diamond armor, I'd be done for. I tried hitting him with my diamond sword, but he didn't even flinch. He started laughing hysterically, as if I had just tickled him. You thought you could mess with me and get away with it? You thought you could steal my party guest, my Christmas? You made a mistake, Zozo, but don't worry, it's the last mistake you'll ever make. He jumped forward and swung one of his claws. The might of his claws almost knocked me out. There was no way I could save anyone from him in this state. I'm so sorry guys, but I've gotta go. He's too powerful. I promise I'll come back for you soon. And as I ran away, all of the villagers were looking at me while Evil Steve laughed. I felt terrible. It was like I had let everyone down. On days 85 to 89, I went back to my base. A failure. I didn't know if I'd ever be strong enough to face Evil Steve. Forget stealing Christmas. There's not even gonna be a Christmas. All thanks to Evil Steve. But that's when Cindy Lou approached me, and she was carrying a book. It's a multi-shot enchantment book. With this, your crossbow will fire three shots at once, so it'll be three times as powerful. But Cindy Lou, don't you get it? I'm not strong enough to beat Evil Steve. It's over. I failed, no matter how cool my crossbow is. That's not true, Zozo. You're smart and kind, even for a Grinch. And I know you want to get Max and my grandpa and everyone else back. One way or another, you'll figure it out. I believe in you. And that was exactly what I needed to hear. In that moment, I knew I could save everyone. Maybe I could even save Evil Steve. But there were a few final things I needed to do first. I finished the Max statue, finishing off the antler I tied to the top of his head. He looked exactly like I wanted him to, and I just knew when Max saw the finished statue, he'd be amazed. And then there was one last thing I could do that might give me an advantage against Evil Steve. To defeat him, I needed to talk to the guy who made him the way he was. The evil wizard! Found him out next to a frozen lake, living in a beat up old shack, rather than a big castle. I asked him if he knew anything that might help me stop evil Steve. Well, if you want to change his tune, your best bet will be returning him to his original reindeer form. But how would I do that? There's a potion of form reversion, but the only one I know about is hidden in the ancient tomb and guarded by the Vex. Then I guess I'm going to the ancient tomb. On days 90 to 94, under the instructions of the evil wizard, I went to the ancient tomb in search of the potion of form reversion. It's so spooky in here, and I wonder what that Vex thing the evil wizard mentioned is. And that's when I found out. The Vex flew straight towards me, carrying a spectral sword. He was as fast as he was scary, but thanks to Cindy Lou, I had my special crossbow. A few well-placed shots, and he was down. I guess you weren't so tough after all, Vex. I found the potion of former version on a stand at the back of the ancient tomb. Looks like I finally had the secret ingredient to change everything. Hope you're ready for a Christmas you'll never forget, Evil Steve. On days 95 to 97, Cindy Lou helped me make a few final adjustments. We applied the sharpness enchantment to my diamond sword just so it'd pack that extra punch. We also prepared a few extra potions, including the potion of healing and the potion of strength. I wouldn't want to take you on now, Zozo. On day 98, it was almost time to finally go and take down Evil Steve for good. But first, I had one more important thing to do. Eat a balanced breakfast. After all, to fight a final battle, you need energy, and you get energy by eating right. 
Did you know you can also get an energy boost from typing Z-O-Z-O -Z -O on YouTube and finding all of our videos? And be sure to leave a comment telling us what character or creature you'd like to see me play next. I love reading your suggestions. On day 99, it was time for the final battle. I returned to Evil Steve's castle, armed and loaded with every weapon, enchantment, and potion I'd gathered over my time here. Alright Evil Steve, time for you to find out what I'm really made of. I used my Grinch sneak ability to get back into the castle without being found. Evil Steve never seems to run out of undeath warriors. Hope you guys don't mind if I just slip by without saying hi. I knew my way around since I got in last time, and I used my sneak ability and found my way to the dungeon room immediately. I knew that Evil Steve would be waiting for me, so I quickly drank a strength potion and ran straight into the main room of the dungeon. You're back, Zozo. Ready to be defeated again? Not this time, Evil Steve. I'm a whole new Grinch. The time was right. I went through my final upgrade into Super Grinch. My hearts really did grow three sizes that day, because now I had 30, as well as being bigger, faster, and stronger than ever before. You're getting uninvited for my Christmas party for this, Zozo. That's okay, Evil Steve. You're still invited to mine. And so the fight began. He was fast and strong for sure, but in my current form, we were finally evenly matched. I took my potions of healing and strength, and they kept me fighting fit. It's over, Evil Steve. You can't win this. With a few hits from my diamond sword, Evil Steve was cornered, and I had my trump card left over, the form of reversion potion. Time to take your medicine, Evil Steve. I gave him the potion, and in the instant, he transformed back into the reindeer he once was. Wow, I finally feel like myself again. I don't feel like being so evil anymore. Glad to hear it, Steve. How about you help me free all these prisoners then? I'd like my dog back, Cindy Lou wants her grandpa back, and everyone else just wants to go home. Yes, Zozo, of course. Now where did I put that key? With Evil Steve turned back into a reindeer again, and becoming regular nice Steve, he returned to his home and seemed happy to be back to normal. I finally did steal Christmas, and also stole back all of the villagers, and Max, and Cindy Lou's grandpa, and everyone else. We all celebrated Christmas together, and had an awesome time. I may not have been that great as the Grinch, but at least I had a wonderful Christmas.